Thanks everyone for joining today's webinar on performance testing for native mobile apps. My name is Ophir Prusak from BlazeMeter, and we're going to get started in just one second. In today's session, uh, we're going to start with a few slides and then go into an actual demo of a new tool which we just released, which makes uh, recording performance tests for native mobile apps really, really easy. And personally, I'm really, really excited about it. So let's go ahead and see what we have for today. We're gonna to start with a high level overview about the importance of mobile testing. We'll quickly go over the real world example that we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to talk a little about mobile app architecture and then mobile recorder to the rescue, how that works. We're going to then show you how to edit the recording. I'll run the actual test itself, then we'll go into some reporting to see how you can uh, ultimately go in and analyze the results. And last but not least, we'll have a few minutes for QA at the end. So let's start with, I mean, why is performance testing for mobile apps so important in the first place? Uh, I did some searching on the internet and I found this excellent report. It's a little old, it's from 2011, but it asks the exact same questions which you should be asking yourself in terms of the users of your mobile app, which is kind of what do they expect? And as you can see, users definitely want not only a fast user experience, they think it should be probably faster, uh, if not just about as fast as on the web as on the phone. So. Uh, definitely people expect the experience to be fast, which means you need your backend to be fast. And the next question is, well, in terms of actual numbers, what does that mean? What does fast mean to you? And as we can see, and this is based in, again, in 2011, uh, fast actually means three seconds or less for most people, which means if it takes more than three seconds for the actual user experience for the app to respond, that's considered slow and what I found interesting also is that 15% of the people even said one second or less. And last but not least, in terms of what the impact is on what happens if you do have a slow user experience on your mobile app, uh, you can see that the vast majority of people basically don't give you a second chance or maybe will give you a second chance. Uh, I know from personal experience, if I go to an app and I load it up and it starts spinning and you know it says thinking or waiting if after two or three seconds i don't get a a, a good response i don't get a response maybe i'll try it again but personally i'll even never try it again so definitely in terms of what people are expecting they're expecting a fast response and you usually don't get a second chance so it should be obvious to you why it's important to have a fast mobile application in the first place which brings us to what we're gonna to cover today. So going back to, we understand the importance, going back to ultimately, uh, what's the actual real user case scenario that we're gonna be showing in today's webinar? So let's say you have a native mobile app and you wanna answer the simple question is, can your mobile app handle 50 concurrent users with a response time of less than one second? That's a very valid question. And that's what we're going to answer today with an actual real mobile app, native mobile app, and the back end. So let's now take a look for those of you who are, let's say, new to mobile app development or maybe new to kind of front end, back end server. How does it work in terms of how do mobile apps uh, communicate with the back end server? And then we'll jump right into mobile recorder to the rescue and explain to you how our mobile recorder works from an architectural perspective. So this is a pretty straightforward and pretty simple architecture where basically you have your mobile app and that's on whatever device it is. It's an iOS device or maybe it's a Android device. And that mobile app is making an HTTP request. That HTTP request ultimately reaches your backend and that can be, let's say, maybe an Apache web server or a .NET, whatever technology you're using. It's an HTTP request which is hitting a backend that backend is doing something to respond with the, uh, with the request, doing some data analysis, or just maybe returning some data, and you get back an HTTP response. And that can be either HTTP or HTTPS. It doesn't really matter in terms of the architecture. It's the same architecture. So what we wanna do 
in terms of being able to do performance testing uh, is all about being able to simulate this mobile app, sorry, being able to simulate this mobile app here. So our back end, it looks like we have 50 or maybe 500 concurrent users uh, and ultimately see if the back end can handle that with whatever number we want to test with. So we need to basically recreate the same request that this mobile app is making. And how do we do so? By basically putting a recorder between the mobile app and the back end. And this is done uh, the same way that, uh, that a proxy is set up. For those of you who've ever used a proxy, it's the same underlying idea that there is kind of a man in the middle or this uh, server in the middle, which the mobile app now isn't talking directly to the back end. It's actually talking to a proxy, or in this case, we actually have a recorder, which simply conveys that HTTP request over back to the back end. And then whatever the back end response is back to the proxy, it again goes back to the mobile app. And that's ultimately how, uh, how overall a proxy works. But what we have is a bit different. It's actually a recorder. So it takes the same functionality of the proxy, but it adds one more element. It saves the request. So all those requests that your mobile app are making, HTTP request one, then two, then three, it goes and sequentially saves all those requests. And that's the magic of the recorder. But there's still one other element which is very important, and or two other elements which are really important. It's not just a question of saving the request, there's two other things that our recorder does. So first of all, as you know, if you've ever tried to test a uh, backend which supports secure connections or HTTPS, then what you probably have seen that you can't just take a look at those requests because they're encoded, they're encrypted. So the first thing we did is give you the ability to install a certificate on your mobile app device, which basically what it's saying is it's telling the mobile device, trust our proxy that uh, it can now also be a certificate for the request. The reason it does so is that in order to take a look at those requests in the first place, since they're originally encrypted, the proxy has to kind of unencrypt them, take a look what it is, and then re-encrypt them. But since we're re-encrypting them with uh, our own certificate and not the original certificate from the back end, uh, basically what's called a man in the middle, we need to tell the device, it's okay, don't worry, don't raise any security issues, otherwise your app is gonna fail and say this isn't a, secure, a truly secure connection or it wasn't signed by who I think it was signed. So that's the whole point of why we need to install the secure certificate. And again, it's only required if you're testing a backend which does make secure requests. If you're testing a backend that's just eight plain old HTTP and it's not HTTPS, then you don't even need to install the certificate. And then last but not least, our recorder also gives you the ability to export those requests into a few different file formats. And what we're gonna to show today is the ability to export into the JMeter format. And JMeter is uh, probably the leading open source tool today for performance testing. And it's also the same format that BlazeMeter uses uh, for when we run performance tests in the cloud, and that's what we're gonna show you. So the ability to export that into JMeter is what makes it so powerful. So how do we actually do this? I mean, this process looks great. Let's now go through the actual steps, and we'll show you some screenshots, uh, and then I'll also show you a live demo of doing all of this. So the testing environment we're gonna do for today's demo uh, is the app we're gonna be using. It's basically the WordPress native app. When I was looking for something to show a real life demo of an application which is hitting a backend server, and I also wanted it to be a backend server that I can truly create load, since I'm not an app developer myself, I found that the WordPress native app can talk to whatever backend WordPress you want, uh, and it's, it's talking through the API, so it's still an excellent example, even though, uh, it's WordPress at the end of the day, we're using it just like you would a normal native app. And the actual backend is gonna be wordpress.blazedemo.com, which is a server which I installed myself. So first of all, let's look at the recorder setup overall, and then we'll go through the steps. So since we're gonna be using a proxy, the first thing you need to do is turn on airplane mode in your phone. The reason you need to do so is you need to make sure that all of the requests going from your mobile device, not to your phone, but if it is, going from your mobile device to the back end, go through a Wi-Fi network and not through the cellular network. 
That's because a cellular network, you can't really add a proxy to it. So we turn on airplane mode to turn off cellular data. Then we turn on Wi-Fi. We're then going to create the mobile proxy, set up Wi-Fi to use a mobile proxy. We'll use the app and then save ultimately the recording. So first things first, how do we actually do this in an actual iPhone? And I did some screenshots, I can actually show this later, but I did some screenshots to show you how you do so on your iPhone. And this is an iPhone using uh, iOS uh, 8. Basically, once you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, you hit the little I here, and it'll open up this screen here. And if you scroll to the bottom, you have the ability to put a server and a port. So let's now go back to BlazeMeter. And here is the BlazeMeter interface. Let me show you what you need to do on the BlazeMeter side before you reach that point. So here's a BlazeMeter, and you have here the button for the recorder. Now, the recorder is a feature which does require a BlazeMeter account, but it works also with a free account. So you don't even need a paid account. Anybody can use it using a free account. I'm going to go ahead and click on the recorder once I've logged into BlazeMeter. And I click on Create Proxy. 